iPads and other devices are called tablets because they belong on tables. They are tested 20 centimeters away from that big guy that I showed you before. 20 centimeters away. They are not approved to be held in the laps of little children, although millions of kids are having them now in schools because the people involved in educational technology and those involved in public health research are not talking to one another. Because if they were, they would understand that you're giving children a two-way microwave radiating device, and if you must give them such a device for learning purposes, put it on airplane mode so that it's not sending and receiving signals as it does otherwise. Now this is some new modeling, again, that we've developed with colleagues in Brazil, and we can share with you how we've done it. It's, we first start out with the MRI and create the model with one millimeter voxels, and this is quite a bit of work goes into creating this, and here is what it looks like after a period of six minutes. And that's really not as bad as it might look because you see the red area only gets partway through the eye of the adult, right? The one that we're really concerned about is this one with the young child. And this is a three-year-old brain that we modeled. And you see that by the end of that six-minute call, uh, the peak radiation, yellow and red, is, is, is getting all the way into almost both eyes. And again, this is one call, and it's not going to kill anybody. It may not cause any biological effect whatsoever for one call or two calls or three calls. But the question is, what's the cumulative impact of this kind of exposure? How do we evaluate it? And I want to show you an example of some of the work that we are doing now that I'm releasing here for the first time. And this is a modeled microwave radiation dose of a six-year-old with greater levels to the frontal and temporal lobes, eyes and cheek. And watch this here. Now, yellow, white, and red are the hottest, all right? And if you look carefully, you will see it's going into the eye, the nose. Do it again, just so you'll get to see it. And partly into the brain stem. Now, that's just showing you that there's going to be some exposure into that area of a young head. It doesn't tell you that there's any biological effect, right? Now, the next slide is going to show you something that might be of interest to students and faculty here. And that has to do with exposure to the reproductive organs. We call them the gonads. I think you say the testicles and bone marrow. And look here at the radiation as it gets into the groin area. And that's just from having a mobile phone modeled into the pocket. And this, again, is based on a normalized SAR with a, I think had a, a dipole antenna. Now, the breast. The breast is mostly fat, contains a lot of fluid. Things that contain fat and fluid cook faster in the microwave oven. Now, a cell phone can't cook anything, all right? Mobile phones do not pop popcorn. That was a fraud. They don't make any heat that we know of, otherwise they wouldn't be permitted. But they do go through things that contain fat and fluid. And we are now working at Environmental Health Trust with scientists at the University of California, San Francisco, uh, scientists uh, at formerly the president of the American Cancer Society of California,